Okay, so you've installed Workflow for Professional Edition, and you've landed on your home page. The next thing you want to do is navigate to the upper right navigation, go to your Apps drop-down menu, and select Workflow. Once you've done that, you'll notice three new tabs, Workflow Setup, Workflows, and Workflow Actions. If your page layout includes the sidebar component and Create New, you'll also see that the Workflow tab appears here. Workflow setup, uh, you'll come here and we wanna, you want to validate that scheduled workflow has, has been initiated. Workflows is where you create new workflows or you take a look at your list of workflows. You'll see the standard drop-down menu here for your custom list views. Uh, there's some out-of-the-box views here that you have and of course you can always create your own custom list views for your workflows. Workflow actions, here you will see the various workflow actions that you've already created. You'll see one sub tab for, for each workflow action, tasks, field updates, email alerts, and new records. So for now, we wanna get started by creating a new workflow. So again, it's your personal preference. Do I wanna create one here or create my new workflows here? I'm gonna go ahead and click on the button. First thing we're gonna do is select the object for which we wanna base our workflow rules. So right now I'm gonna create a workflow rule on the opportunity object. So click next, give it a name, uh, closed a close new deals. Okay. The next thing we want to do is select the evaluation criteria. You want to create you want and then the, what the evaluation criteria does is it tells the workflow engine when we should evaluate records. And for this particular rule, we want to evaluate the records only when the records are newly created, when they're created or edited, or anytime the criteria is met. For this rule, we're going to go ahead and select this uh, option two, created or edited to meet the criteria. So for this rule here, let me see, let's go, let's go, let's base this on stage. Let's say when opportunity stage equals closed one and I'll see my if you're if you have a longer list then make just know that you can scroll up and down right here so I've selected closed one and let's just go ahead let's have a second uh, let me let's go with type or opportunity type so we'll have two pieces of criteria okay so what we've done we've created a rule we've named it we said whenever you a record is new or create it, newly created or edited, and the stage equals close one and the opportunity type equals new business, then let's, uh, I want you to execute the following workflow actions. Now what's important about this here, it, it, you're gonna wanna understand this really well. Option three, if you look at this closely, okay, um, options one and two can only fire off one time over the, life, the lifespan of a given record. Now, a given record, any record could have hundreds of workflows that impact that record. But in this case, where we've selected option two, then uh, the way this engine works is it's only going to fire off the, the actions that we're about to create one time. Option three can fire off numerous times. And, uh, and, and, and with, that, with that being said, uh, there's some strict rules to follow when you're using this option here. So next thing we want to do is create the workflow actions. In this, for this particular workflow here, we want to create a new email alert. So again, let's go ahead and name it. Uh, notify operations of new deal. Okay. Next, let's select the workflow or excuse me, the email template that we want to use for this email alert. So I'm going to go ahead and select the product line items. Okay. Next thing we'll notice is this option right here. What this option does here is it says, okay, who do we want to send? Who do we want to be the recipient of this email alert? I can base it on my users. So right here you see a list of all the users in this particular org. So it's going to bring up a list of all your active users. It can be based on roles. So all the roles that you have configured in your Salesforce org 
will appear here. And what that means is, let's say I select customer service, operations, and let's say project management. So what this means is every user in Salesforce, every active user that has this role, either of these roles, is going to receive an email alert based on the rules that I just created. Okay. I can also select let's say I have a custom email address field on here I could send it to this person as well whoever's so it'll look at the record that is triggering the workflow and whatever email address is in that field will they will also become a recipient I also have the options for related contacts and related users the related contacts and related users are just lookup fields on that object so if I have a lookup field to the to the contact object on my on opportunities then I'll be able to select uh, that uh, the email address for that person for that related contact and the same goes for related user let's say you had a lookup field to project manager on your opportunity so and I selected the related user okay then I would be able to select this field right here and that that person's name who is who is on that opportunity that's triggering the workflow will be an email recipient here I can also add additional email addresses and these additional additional email addresses can be connected to people that are not inside Salesforce so they, so they could be any email address whether they're users or not and this is the key here if you're gonna send more if you're gonna insert more than one email address here you must separate each of the emails with a comma Otherwise, the email alerts will not fire off. This section here is optional. Let's say that I want this email alert to be from the sales team or from some generic email or generic name and email address. I can insert values to one of these fields or both of these fields or neither. Strictly optional. Once I'm done there, I select save. Well, what did I do? Okay, it's telling me that this is a duplicate name here. So all I really have to do is change this here. Okay. So I've created a workflow rule. I set the evaluation criteria, and now I've created one, um, one workflow action. I can add up to five workflow actions. Actually, I think it's 10 workflow actions. So let's say in this case here, I also want to create a task and again, I have several options. I want this task to go to a role, a user, the record owner, or related user. This case here, I'm going to say, let's go ahead and, and select a, a, a one of our users. So I'm going to say Kumar Del Vecchio. Okay, this is set up portal access for new customer. And what this is... So this is going to be the subject for your for the uh, the task that's created for this user. The due date is the date field on your task, and it's saying when do you want this task to be due for Kumar Del, Del Vecchio. Uh, we're going to say today plus seven days. So one week one week after the trigger fires, fly, uh, fires off, we want a task for this user. Yeah, set up access okay I can set the values so the default value here will be in progress it's a high priority and it's uh, something other than a call meeting or email we're gonna call it other so now I'm gonna click on save and then we're done so I can come back at any time and edit to add additional workflow actions right but in this case here I have one workflow rule two actions next thing I'm gonna do is click on activate now we wait for records that meet the criteria and you'll see these actions start to fire off. That's it. Thanks a lot for taking a look at Workflow for Professional Edition.